All right, time to get started on my Crimson Peak review. Zer. Beware. Beware of what? Beware of the review. Beware. Okay. If you're with me, touch this pen. Anybody there? No one? Well, screw you then. I'll just get started on the review anyway. Who <gasps> the Now before this review begins, I want to make one thing perfectly clear to inform all of you who plan to see this film based off of what you saw from the trailers. This is not a horror film. It is in fact a gothic romance story. Do not get it twisted. Even Guillermo del Toro himself on Twitter said that this is not a horror film, it is a gothic romance film. Do not go into this film expecting to see a traditional horror film. You are going to be sorely disappointed. There are a lot of tense, creepy, scary moments, but as a whole, it's just a gothic romance story. Now that you're aware of that, let's get to the review. Hey guys, the Black Critic Guy, and I'm here today to review the film Crimson Peak. So Crimson Peak follows Edith Cushing, the daughter of a very wealthy businessman who since the age of 10 has been able to see ghosts and has fallen head over heels for this English gentleman by the name of Sir Thomas Sharp. She soon marries this English gentleman and moves into his house where he lives with his sister Lucille. But then she begins to unravel that things are not what they seem as she starts seeing these ghostly apparitions warning her about the dangers of this house and the siblings that live within. Now Crimson Peak is sort of a passion project as it was produced, co-written, and directed by Guillermo del Toro, the visionary director behind Pan's Labyrinth, the Hellboy series, Pacific Rim, and voiced a talking shit in El Santo vs. Tetona Mendoza. Oh yeah, you thought I forgot, didn't you, Guillermo? I'll never forget. And I won't lie, I was pretty intrigued to see this film. From what I saw from the trailers, it looked like a really good horror film. Then Guillermo del Toro came out on Twitter and said that this wasn't a horror film, it is actually a gothic romance story. And since, you know, most trailers nowadays are so goddamn misleading, I really took his word on it. I went into this film not thinking it's a horror film, it's a gothic romance film. But at the same time, I was a bit hesitant because with Guillermo del Toro, he's always hit or miss for me. Sometimes I like his work, other times I'm sorely disappointed by what he has accomplished. But I have to say, Crimson Peak was a hit. Like, this is not only one of my favorite Guillermo del Toro films, but one of my favorite films of the year. I loved it! There are so many great elements to this film, but the biggest standout out of all of them, the best thing that really just sucked me into the film, was its overall style and presentation. It was stunning and Beautiful. From the visual and special effects, to the cinematography, the lighting, the art direction, the set designs, the costumes, and even the way they were transitioned from scene to scene. Very old school-esque. I have not seen a film in a very long time, at least a modern film, that utilized the iris transition effect. Now for those who haven't taken a film class yet, or aren't familiar with the different transitions used in film, there's this very special and unique transition that is rarely used nowadays but was used prevalently in older classic films known as the iris where basically the entire screen will slowly be encompassed in black except for a certain circular point where they're trying to put focus on that scene mostly you see that in cartoons whenever they like cut to black they do the woo that's where you would see them, but they also use it in film as well. Sometimes it's used in a very artistic fashion, and sometimes it's used in a silly fashion. In this film, it's used in an artistic fashion, and I thought it looked freaking awesome. All of those elements 
were fantastically done in this film. I mean, oh my god, the lighting was so goddamn gorgeous, as well as the cinematography, just the aesthetic of the film, the atmosphere of the film was well handled. The story of the film is so engaging and compelling. It literally sucks you into the world of Crimson Peak. It makes you want to know what the hell is going on in this house. Why are these siblings acting so creepy? And whether or not our main character is going to survive this ordeal. And my god, there are so many parts in the story that are just straight up brutal and creepy. Sometimes it was even hard to witness. They did not hold back in this film. I mean, I know the film is called Crimson Peak, but I did not expect there to be that much red in the film. Oh, it was just flowing out from the screen. And I absolutely loved the way the story unfolds in this film. It was excellently paced. Yes, it is very predictable and you do know how the story is going to end, but again, it's not about the destination, it's about the journey to the destination. And the journey is so captivating and marvelous. And finally, the characters and the acting. First off, the acting in the film is stellar. Each of the actors and actresses really bring their A-games and deliver solid performances. Our main character, Edith, played by Mia Wajak, <laughs> Mia Wazikowska, I think that's how you pronounce her name, but I'm just gonna refer to her as Mia. Mia did a really good job at portraying the character of Edith. She made her somebody that was really likable, somebody that we can really root for and really empathize with. Tom Hiddleston also gives a really great and deep performance as Sir Thomas Sharp. He was really good, he was very likable, I liked the development that his character goes through, and I sort of kind of felt the romance between him and Edith, although I felt like out of all the elements in the story, their romance is the weakest part, and I'll get to that later. But without a shadow of a doubt, the most fascinating and terrifying character and performance in the entire film is Lucille Sharp, played by Jessica Chastain. Oh, talk about one intense character. She's basically a violin string just waiting to snap. Throughout the entire film, you don't know when it's coming, but you know it's coming. And Jessica Chastain kills it in this film. Literally kills it. She is the best performance in the film. Now, though I overall think that this is a great film, there are a few small issues with it that you might see as nitpicks, but they do detract from the experience of the film. One of the major ones that you might not have noticed, but I noticed and it really, really distracted me, were the constant sound editing errors. I don't know who was in charge of editing or syncing the sound up with the picture, but they did a piss poor job. Because there will be scenes where characters are visibly seen speaking but the audio that you're hearing does not sync up with their lip movements. It's so damn obvious. And it doesn't happen just once or twice or three times. There were six moments in the film that I visibly noticed that the audio you were hearing does not sync up with what is happening on screen. That right there is a technical issue with the film that should have been spotted and fixed right away. Another small issue is that some of the romance moments in the film kind of felt tacked on and just didn't register with me. And since Guillermo del Toro himself said this was going to be a gothic romance, I thought he would at least execute the romance elements a little better. Or who knows, maybe I'm just bitching because I'm a huge fan of the romance genre and I expected a little more. And finally, the climax of the film, while overall intense, ended a bit abruptly and underwhelmingly. I mean, I thought they were gonna go out in a big spectacle, a blaze of glory. In fact, it looked like it was building up to something really big and what you ended up getting was kind of like a whimper more than an explosion. But besides those small issues, overall, I freaking adored this film. I enjoyed every single second of it and I cannot wait to see it again. It is a great film and it's definitely going to get a 4.5 out of 5 stars. It is one hell of a film and I highly recommend that you guys go and see it. But anyway, what did 
did you guys think of this film? Did you really enjoy it as much as I did? Or did you find it really boring and played out and you don't really like gothic romances? And let me know, what is your favorite Guillermo del Toro film? Comment below and let me know. And stay tuned, I do plan to review Goosebumps and Bridge of Spies and hopefully next Tuesday, you will get a Hell Girl review. And until then guys, if you like to see more videos on this channel and be a part of the Black Critic Crew, please hit that subscribe button below, like this video if you really enjoyed it, and I'm Tony Wild II, the Black Critic Guy. Till then, peace YouTube.